Hello again everybody, Tony is back. Today I'm flying from Albuquerque, New Mexico to Fort Sumner, New Mexico. I'm flying a Beechcraft 3050i King Air dual prop. I've only flown this once before. I'm looking around for a new airplane, so we'll give this one a try. I tried a Cessna... I can't remember the name now, but one of the dual engine jets, and I really didn't like it, but this one um, seems pretty nice so far, so let's go ahead and get started. That warning is the parking brake, and that will go away now. And let's go. powerful engines. Flaps up. Already set the autopilot, although maybe I'll fly the plane for a while and get used to it. Feels very light and responsive and very fast. KH317 continue. Please departure. I will contact you next when you leave my airspace. So far I'm liking this. Tower KH317 continue for east departure. Uh, looks like I might have the engine a little hot, and so now I can finally see those dials. So let's pull back on that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, these ones over here were blinking. So I'll get us back on heading. And then I'll turn it over to the autopilot. So far I'm liking this plane. The uh, Garmin displays are very familiar. The problem with the jet was it had a different display system and it looked really awful. I couldn't really see it without being, you know, nose nose up into it. KH317, you are leaving my airspace frequency change approved. They might need to do a better Alpha job with the graphics. Tower, Maybe with my settings, but change. I mean I'm at these Alpha controls approach KH317 is type Beechcraft King Air same four miles east of settings. Request flight following. Alright, so I want to continue to be turning KH317 this way. The plane feels Fox very, very responsive and reliable. And the twin Fox engines Fox sound really nice and stereo. I mean, I don't suppose you buy a plane for the sound of the engines, but radar contact, five mile, east of Albuquerque, they do sound nice. I feel like my altitude target may be a little high. I'm not seeing anything Copy off in the horizon that looks like it's a problem. So, I think the thing to do is to drop throttle, level off, put it just directly into altitude hold mode. It just feels very responsive, feels really easy to fly. I think the first time I flew this, I didn't, f I don't know, didn't feel comfortable, but this feels great. I don't, I don't know what the difference is. Um, Alright, so we're sort of on course. First thing I'm going to do is engage autopilot. Alright, so that'll take care of our heading, and then I want altitude hold mode. And then lift off the stick and let the plane take over. Just checking everything is set the way I want it. And then the next thing is, we don't need to be this high up, so let's drop altitude. It's a little hard to see. Let's 
Let's drop altitude a couple thousand feet. Alright, and that won't engage until I hit flight level control. Which is right here. Alright, then we can let off the throttle and let it make up the difference. There we go. I wonder what that master caution is about, because all I did is turn on autopilot. Knowledge. Okay. I don't know. Master caution about what? Didn't like something. Plane's in a bad mood or something. I feel like we're level according to the instruments, but it doesn't feel level. Maybe if I sit in the center and pop my head up, it'll feel like we're level. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, I like this plane. Um, I wonder what all this stuff is. Wipers and all that kind of stuff. Looks like that's where you set the brightness. There's a voltmeter. Oh, that's nice. Does that actually work? It does work. I really like it so far. Alright, I think we're at a good altitude, so let's go outside and start looking around. I'm gonna look at the plane first of all. Oh, that's a nice shot with the sun. It's 8.50 a.m. or I'm at, in Pacific time, I think it's probably 9.50 a.m. in New Mexico. Go up. I look for a landing gear control inside. Oh, you know what? Actually, they do. Okay. Well, that ought to help us gain some speed. Make things quieter. Yeah, it looks really cool with those dual props. I think we can afford to go a little faster. One point of switching planes is to get a faster plane and have shorter flights. Yeah, I'm loving the plane. I don't know how many seats I need to look that up. I tried to look it up quickly online and didn't see anything. It looks like it could see 15, 20 people maybe. Shots. That's a very cool shot, I think. Great aggressive looking eager plane. Alright, so that's the plane view. Uh, how about the area? Looks like 
like a lot of farmland, a lot of rectangles of various kinds. So kind of a settlement down there. Moriarty. I guess that's a little airport, a little landing strip or something. Take a drone out and look around. Autopilot's got everything stable. The weather seems really clear. Alright, so let's let's go sightseeing. Um, this isn't particularly interesting, just some agricultural stuff. The shape of the area is kind of unusual though. Um, kind of wonder why it looks like there should be a larger rectangle here and it's filled with something else. You'd expect all these to be maybe connected and not covered with this what looks like moss or something. This is the same texture I saw all the way throughout Arizona and into New Mexico. Um, just very boring land, basically. Uh, let's go see what Moriarty is about. First of all, let's go check in with the instruments. Speed looks good. Altitude looks good. The way things show up in patches, it makes me think that there's missing satellite data and they're filling in with just a default texture. Um, interesting that the airport has its own specific ground texture compared to everything else. I wonder if this is probably just one of the generic airports. Kind of looks like it. Looks like <laughs> toys on the ground, little matchbox cars or something. At least the cars have some definition on my... when I was playing on my mobile laptop, they were just crude rectangles with a little bit of texture, or squares or rectangular cubes or whatever. Alright, well, anyway, that's... Somewhat interesting. Um, not really much else to see here. Let's go back to the plane. Let's see if I can get a nice overhead view. The plane seems to have pretty nice visibility. Heat up, maybe it'd be right here. Main heat. 
An operative, okay. So we, we wouldn't be using that. Uh, there's the flaps, interesting. Go around, I don't know what go around means, interesting. <laughs> Sounds like something you would have in a car. Turn off the storm warning. Oh no, you can't. <laughs> storm warning is stuck on. I suppose that's probably a good thing, but it might be nice to be able to turn that off. But that's a funny looking. Oh, that's the landing gear. Okay. Oh, it's a wheel. Alright, well, it's a funny looking control. Seems slightly silly to make it look like a wheel. But, I mean, I guess you don't have to think about it. Wheels up, wheels down, right? But take a wheel and do it up, do it down. Prop test. I wonder what all these things do. Auto feather. I'll have to learn about what all that stuff does. It's probably an operative. Oh, wait. Oh, that's fuel. Alright, so you can switch fuel tanks around. Calm stuff that I'd normally need to use. Master power for avionics. I do wonder how you turn the plane itself off. Um, maybe right there? No. I could figure that out at the time. controls in this plane, and then you've got the whole keyboard down here. Barometer, push auto test of some kind. So I guess there's a manual way to drop the landing gear. Feathering, I wonder what it has to do with the propeller pitch or something. exactly where to turn off the plane, but I'll just start clicking things until it turns off when we land. There must be a door latch. Alright, so what am I trying to find? Seems like I'm trying to find something, but I don't know what that is. I mean, outside of how to turn the plane off. Ice protection, okay. Landing lights, taxi lights. Yeah, I want to find out about propeller pitch and feathering and all that kind of stuff. Alright, so those are the two throttle controls. I wonder what would happen if you adjusted those independently. That probably would be a really bad idea. And the airplane would start turning. <laughs> and so 
so there's actually RPM controls on the propellers. I wonder what that does also. I guess maybe I'll have to experiment with that stuff on the ground and see what happens. I don't want to put the flight in jeopardy, but I would like to know what those things do. And then this must be fuel mixture. Yep. Okay. That's the kind of stuff I have auto-handled. At some point I'd like to learn how to do that. simulator if you turn on the ELT. Um, <laughs> does somebody come up and rescue you, AI, or something? I mean, you think that'd be a nice add-on, anyway. Fuel quantity test, okay. Alright, well anyway, enough of the inside of the plane. Let me reset the view. Let's go back outside. We still have a while to go before we land. Going at a nice speed. We can probably go a little faster. Check those instruments inside. I want to. I don't want to uh, overstress the engines. Both. So it's this one here. Torque and internal temperature is what I usually overdo. So let's just push those up. Suppose that autopilot oscillation is probably realistic. I would think in real life, given sloppiness in the controls, that autopilot would not be dead on like it was in the very first version of the game. This feels realistic to me, but I'm not a pilot. Alright, so we're leveling off. I'm gonna go back and give it some throttle, give it center detent again, it would seem to be a good speed. We're still too high, uh, I'll drop it down again. Uh, maybe another couple thousand. Actually, maybe only one thousand, because I don't know where the landing pattern entrance is going to be. It could be a couple thousand up from the 
4150 feet as the airport's at. But we can do that in a minute. using the mouse to look around. Oh, you know what? I think things locked up, actually. That's the problem. Alright, now it's going again. Hmm. I'm not sure why it locked up, but anyway, kept flying. I suspect it locked up when I turned the Xbox controller off. That's what I was trying to do. I wanted to get this below, you know, below the plane sun shot. Going. I appreciate this game for teaching how to fly. It's supposed to be you know, near study cases. But I also appreciate the aesthetics. It's fun creating shots. Finding really nice looking snapshots throughout the flight. As somebody who likes photography, it's just a lot of fun to be able to do all this artificial stuff. That's a pretty cool shot. I would really like to ride in one of these. This just seems like a really nice upgrade from my green caravan. This may be my new airplane. by the same company. down to 6,000. Pilot will reach out, or co-pilot will reach out to the tower momentarily. Go 
ahead, <clears throat> disengage autopilot. Tower KH3171 miles west to land. KH317 tower. Enter left base, runway tree. Altimeter, 29 decimal minor, 2 wind 262 at tree. Landing here. Fly left base, runway tree KH317. Are we that low to the ground? Landing here. Landing here. I guess so. Landing here. Alright, well, I've got the landing gear down. Looks like the pattern entry is over there. Um, I didn't hear the usual 500. I didn't think we were that close to the ground. Looks like I might have to go up a little bit though. I'm dropping speed too quickly, I need to give me some more thrust. Okay, so where is this pattern entry? It's right there. Okay, I see it now. Alright, we're gonna do flaps down. And push hard on the stick to keep from nosing up. Drop throttle a little bit. so I can see better where I'm going. Okay, let's see. Alright, well we're at the right altitude now. Uh, we're going a little bit too slow. Let's uh, thrust up a bit. don't want to go too fast because I'm going to have to get slow to land. Uh, but there's some scary looking red and white lines on the ticker tape, the speed ticker tape. I do not want to get near that. Alright, we'll start turning, see if we can see where the pattern is. Just in case. Alright, it's proving to be hard to see where that is. I think we might have passed it. Or maybe I'm turning into it now. It's kind of hard to tell. Not used to this airplane yet. Uh, all right. Well, we're actually perfect, except for the speed. Slow it down. I can still see the instruments okay. I think as a pilot you might be able to reach up and look at this view. Alright, but I am going to reset the view because I want to be able to keep an eye on that ticker tape. Heading dangerously down below 90. I do not want to get there. Sharp turn coming up. That will burn off some forward momentum, probably. Going uh, down a little bit on the thrust. Still want to try to get 
get it near the bottom without going there. Alright, I think that's, that's a tight turn, but I think the airplane's okay with it. The rudder's gonna help with that, I think. Another tight turn coming up. Oh, okay. I'm overcorrecting, I think. The plane's very light and responsive, and so I'm gonna have to get used to that. Too fast. Let's drop the thrust. Also got too much altitude. Alright, even the default view, you can actually see pretty well compared to some of the other planes I've been flying. Dropping in speed again, but we kind of need to. We just got to keep an eye on it. I don't want us to go too slow and then land on somebody's rooftop or something. This feels very stable. Nice, clean turn. A little more thrust. Alright, let's see if we can stay lined up on the runway. That would be nice. the 500. Okay, so I guess the landing gear warning comes before the 500 warning. That makes sense. Um, I'm going to keep dropping thrust. I think we might have enough to glide in. If not, I will thrust quickly at the last minute. Lift up just a little bit. Burn off the speed and prepare. to leave the runway. One two two decimal V K H three one seven. Okay. Let's hit the parking brake. Alright, the engines sound like they're going at high speed, but I think maybe some of that is with the propeller pitch? I don't know. So now what we want to do is actually contact the tower. Request taxi to parking. Ground KH317 taxi to parking. KH317 taxi to general aviation parking by taxiway cross runway 21. Taxiing to general aviation parking by taxiway cross runway 21 KH317. Alright, I don't see the usual taxi guides. Maybe it's behind us. Um. Hmm. I see. Okay, so we need to turn around. That's fine. That should be easily done. of rudder and single wheel braking to pivot. I 
need to learn how the power works in this airplane because it feels like the engine sound doesn't necessarily line up with the thrust, which makes sense if the propeller's pitch is changing. I don't know if that's the case or not, but I'm used to using the sound of the engine as a cue, um, and so it made it a little difficult. I felt like I wasn't slowing down enough because the engine speed wasn't seeming to decline. All right, we're going a little fast and having trouble braking. That's why you don't go so fast. All taxiing. Okay. We're still going really fast. I've got the th throttle all the way to the ground. Um, all right, let's keep going. So I'll have to get used to this plane, but it's it's light and powerful. The speed, I like the maneuverability. Um, it's just super responsive to small adjustments, so I'm gonna have to get used to that. And we're just already going like 40 miles an hour or something, just rolling along here. It's probably something I could do to reduce the pitch of the propeller and reduce the thrust. Taxing purposes. And again, rudder and pedal braking to pivot in here. A little more thrust. It wants me to go to the right. Almost. Almost there. Perfect. Okay. Parking brake engaged. off. It was confusing because I hit the button and then they didn't turn off at first, but I guess it goes to a cooldown pattern. Alright, so again the question is how does one actually turn the plane off? I would assume it would be... I don't know. There we go. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.